All right, guys, thank you again for your patience. Once again, I am still Regina, but the screen has now changed for you on your left side. You've got a Togekiss, Dragapult, Pelipper, Ludicolo, Bronzong, and a Rhyferior. And on the right, you've got a Hatterene. Uh, Jury's still out on the pronunciation on that one. Indeedee, a Dracovish, Snorlax, Reuniclus, and an Orangru. So, again, you've got one Rain team here, and you've got a Trick Room team on the other side. Pokemon that, if you have been paying attention to what people have been talking about workshopping, are going to be really familiar to you. Dragapult with that really uh, kind of like great ghost. Uh, sorry. Right, with like kind of heavy attack, you've got that Togekiss with the fantastic follow me making a huge comeback here. Of course, weather got a huge boost this season because now we have the speed trends being recalculated mid match as opposed to the end of the turn. And Rhyferior being an absolute beast when you pair it up with weakness policy, and obviously Dynamaxing helping boost a lot of these moves, giving you weather control right when you need to, and giving you just like a lot of very different options. Again, uh, Dynamax being able to go for only three turns, Hatterene. Uh, generally being used for that sort of trick room team. A very strong special attacker. And here is the battle of the trainer cards. I like both of those. Well, it is. Sorry again, guys. It is going to get really loud in the background. We do have a small area. We've got an Ndidi and Hatterene lead, which, if you guys have been paying attention to the beginning of this game, has been a very strong lead. You've got the follow me with a Psychic Surge Ndidi, and then you've got the Hatterene, who is slow and can hit hard. However, right here on the other side of the field for Angelo is going to be able to at least get a move off because it is a slow Pokemon. Togekiss is going to be kind of the outlier here. You know, you could try to stop an Ndidi here. Uh, the problem is, Psychic Terrain is up, so any priority type moves are not going to work out at all. We've kind of got this thing happening right now where if you want to set up Trick Room, you're going to be helping out that right here a lot. We had a new item come into, uh, into play this year, which is that Room Service, which will lower your speed if you are in Trick Room. So you've got to think, what are you going to have people sort of do for right now? Again, for the background noise, again, guys, really sorry about that, but we've got that right here. You're going straight for that Dynamax turn one. Dynamax Pokemon cannot be faked out, so don't worry about that, guys. Um, and so, I uh, mean, <laughs> sorry, we've got a lot of things going on in the background again. Follow me right now from that Indeed. So, I'm going to redirect all attacks to itself, including from that right Furrier. However, Togekiss going for the Dazzling Gleam, which is a spread move, going to hit both Pokemon. So, any Focus Sashes will be broken. But that is going to be an eject button. So, Indeed, he's going to be switched out for a Pokemon on Steven's side. Uh, he is going to bring back, bring in one of his poor Pokemon. We did see it use Follow Me. So, Trick Room going to be set up possibly with that Hatterene if you aren't afraid of that right Furrier. Yes. Max Rockfall going from that right here. Gonna hit um, that Reuniclus on the switch in here. Just a lot of damage. Again, Red Fury is a very strong Pokemon here. Brings in that Sandstorm with Max Rockfall. It's gonna make sure we do some damage at the end of every turn to all these other Pokemon. Trick Room going up though, so Steven gonna be okay with, have, with having Red Fury possibly being the fastest Pokemon on here. Uh, and everyone taking some resi some residual damage. The Reuniclus is going to be having uh, its HP restored with those leftovers. So right now, that... Um that right here is going to be at the second turn of Dynamaxing, and after this one, we'll have one more. So Trick Room at the bottom of your screen that's going to be up for is, is just started up. Reuniclus hitting that Focus Blast, a very low accuracy move, does super effective damage, and gets a critical hit. However, there we are. We see that Weakness Policy is going to sharply raise that attack and Special Attack on right here. Going to make it even more terrifying. Dazzling Gleam going to connect from both sides on, from that Hatterian. However, Max Quake right now, not going to hit Togekiss because it is part flying. It is absolutely terrifying. Sorry, Max Quake is not like Earthquake. That is completely my bad, guys. Uh, but Reuniclus is going to go down. It is kind of, well, this right here is kind of terrifying, right? Like, once it's been set up by the weakness policy, if you don't stop it, you've got nothing to do for it. Uh, Togekiss using Dazzling Gleam because it is going to be single target, going to do a little bit more damage. And Hatterin also going to take some extra damage because of that Sandstorm. Special defense on Togekiss and right here is going to go up because of that Max Quake, which means it's going to be a little bit harder to hit in case you're um, with that Hatterene because Hatterene is using those special attack moves. However, with Snorlax out on the field, and again guys, remember G-Max Snorlax is legal in the current format right now. G-Max Snorlax is going to be seen mostly as an attacker, so it could do some damage onto that right here. The question is, if you've got that Snorlax and how slow it is in comparison, right? So, so it gets using Helping Hand, going to give that right here an extra like amount of strength for this last turn. Belly Drum Snorlax, though, is going to be able to set up this turn, cuts its HP in half, maximizing its attack, going for that Gluttony Berry. Again, berries this season, though, have been sort of kind of nerfed, so they only, uh, they only heal 33%, as opposed to that uh, 50% right there. 
and we've got Max Quake one more time happening here. So Max Quake is gonna connect with that. So let's just knock it out clean. Again, that weakness policy and the helping hand is just gonna push that damage over the top to guarantee that knockout and give that token kiss and the referee a plus two to their special defense. Now, Strauss is gonna get knocked out on this turn. It is now going to be sort of, um, you know, a 2v4, uh, sorry, 2v4 situation for Steven. It's going to be a little bit difficult. Psychic Train still up for two more turns. Trick Room still up for a couple more turns. However, it is completely benefiting Angelo despite the fact that he did not set up what, uh, he did not set up that trick room at all. Referee is going to be down for this turn. That Dynamax is completely gone now. Uh, however, it is still at plus two special attack and attack. It is at plus two special defense. This thing looks like a wall, and it will be a wall right now. Hatterene at almost, almost knocked out at 30 HP right now. In DD not really the most uh, attack-heavy Pokemon. However, we've got right now... Um, so as of right yeah, now, we do have, have that Hatterene going for that, uh, sorry, Indeedy, my bad, Indeedy going for the Dynamax, and not something you see very often. Um, we'll get an HP boost again because of that Dynamax, and possibly a little more if you've fed enough Dynamax candies from before the event. Um, but Togek is going for the follow me, so it will, it will also redirect all the attacks on Steven's side to itself here. And we've got Dazzling Gleam, not gonna matter for that follow me because of the fact that it does hit both Pokemon. That Togekiss, despite that critical hit, uh, that special defense really coming in handy here as it will hold on. And Earthquake, again, at plus two for special attack and special, um, sorry, special attack and attack because of that weakness policy is going to pick up the clean knockout on both that Ndidi and that Hatterene. And as we see that Ndidi faint, that will give game two and round one to Angelo. So, sorry to miss game one, guys. Hopefully we won't have that much technical issues in round two. Um, uh, you guys can't see it, but half of our people are already outside. Most of them are playing still. So I would say like 10 to 15 minutes, maybe at not even that, like seven minutes uh, for everyone to finish. If you guys can hear the stuff in the background, we have a lot of people who this is their first event and it's like super great. Um, but thank you guys for your patience. If you if you don't have enough VGC in your life and you watched Pete Ons' uh, 82 person midseason showdown, you can come watch our 60 something uh, PC. So it's super fun. I'm really, really excited to see what today is gonna bring, what the rest of the month and the season is gonna hold for VGC. And I will see you guys in round two. I will be solo commentating as far as I know for right now. So I will see you guys in a little bit.